to Affinity Evolve on the FTOG server. In the last episode, we colorized some sheep, made some dyes, and made a squid. But I thought we might start getting into some magic soon. Now, the problem with things like the blood magic and everything else is you need very large areas. And really, our current spawn base over there isn't really that large. And we're getting a bit surrounded by things. So doing things like the blood magic altar could be difficult just to be able to get the beacons to work. So what I thought in this episode we'll do is take a little walk around and see if we can find a more appropriate base for our magic area. So let's start looking. So the first thing we're going to do is probably head over uh, this direction more. So we'll head towards our existing base. And I thought we'd head up this way and see what we come up with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'll go fly around a little bit and see what I can find. I'll come back if we find any interesting spots. Wow. This is rather cool. This is a new. Okay. Well, here's a crag. Quite a large one. Lots of potential. I like the look of this one. It's very wet looking. Ooh, now this looks evil. It looks like you could, it's a wasteland, but it looks like you could have something very, very evil looking in here. Well, now this one looks interesting. This one looks very interesting. It's got a bit of a purple thing to it. It's a volcano type of idea. Not quite a volcano. There's an interesting collection of height to it. Could be be utilized quite nicely. Hmm. Okay, I think I've picked a spot. This is the ice village that we came across. Um, and from over here, if we look at all the billions of waypoints I've brought around as we're gone, um, it's about 3,000 blocks away from spawn um, and about about the same to the house, the current one. Um, and I think it would make a really good spot right in the middle here to have some sort of ice palace thing. Um, I just think it would look really quite cool, especially if you've got the, the blood magic altar and all of the various things here. It's a nice clear area, which makes it nice and easy to place uh, to actually build. Um, so I'll probably pick right here, unless I've found somewhere else. But I think this is really the best place, and I think the idea of an ice palace just it got me tempted. It's not something I've built before. Um, so see how it goes. Uh, what? This guy's mammoth. That is one 
One mana zombie. Not even die either. I don't think I've got a bow and arrow on me at the moment, do I? No. Wow, that guy is humongous. <laughs> well, <laughs> since I'm recording, because I thought I might record that because it just seems so odd. Um, as you can see, I have kind of marked out, if we go over here, go here maybe, kind of marked out where the boarding is going to go. I'm hoping to have quite a large boarding. Uh, the entrance will be here. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether I like the entrance just yet. Um, but of course it's early stages and I'm just planning out ideas at the moment. Um, Blood Magic will probably be in the middle, as you can see from the layout. And there will be wings along the sides here. Uh, this will be duplicated on the other side as well. I'll possibly have something for Batania at the back and have a big large glass house type thing for it. Um, obviously all this will be replaced with, well, obviously all this will be, uh, it won't be dirt in the end, it will be some other block, but of course I'm just marking it out for now. Um, but yeah, this is, this is how it's going at the moment. Not really like the report, the only reason of course I'm here reporting it is just because of that mammoth sized zombie. Um, so let's just get something to bring us back up to full health again. Um, so I'll return back to placing down blocks and getting an idea on what I'm going for. Okay, so back at the base now and I need some materials. Um, so what I thought I'd do first is we're going to need to make up some packed ice. Now, to make packed ice, you can put packed ice slabs together, which you can make from railcraft. How does that work? You get three packed ice together and you'll get six of those, but there's no way of going that way. Not helpful. Um, put ice with a pure daisy will make you that. Hmm, interesting. Uh, fluid transposer with Jolly Cryophium. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> chisel. That's all packed ice. I don't think any of that ice. No. Uh, the Rock Crusher. No. Shaped Crafting. Back to the sky. Okay, so it looks like the Pure Daisy, which is cool because we're. It's a bit of a magic -y episode, so we could probably use that. Uh, so to get the Pure. To get ice. Uh, we can compress snow. Uh, no. Okay, so it looks like we're going down this recipe to get snow. We can put snowballs together. Uh, we can make them into crops. Uh, mace red ice. Extract snow. Mana. Golden Crusher, Snow Golem might be a good way of going. Um, what else? Oh, other options. Oh, oh, compressed water. Can we do that? Let me grab some water and let's have a look. water? No? Oh. It's water, didn't it? Ice. Where was it? Snow. Snow. Yeah, snow. So water bucket and a compressor makes snow. Bucket. 
no. It's lying. Okay. What other options we got here? So to make ice. We're going down. To make snow, I should say. We're going down. It's the compressor. Oh, we could put water with a pure daisy. That looks like a good recipe. It's just a bucket of water, I assume. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Uh, the pure daisy. It just takes mystical white petals um, and a petal apography, uh, which isn't too difficult. There are actually white petals in the farm area, and I've picked some of those up already, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, to make the petal thingy bob, whatever it's called, um, double compressed cobblestone which is just 9 compressed cobblestone, which of course is 9 cobblestone. Um, a cauldron, which is just a um, some iron plates. Uh, a couple of cobblestone slabs, and any form of petal. So it shouldn't be too, uh, too difficult to make. Um, in fact, if we go into here... No, I don't have any of those just yet. I think I've requested some. That in fact, let's grab all this stuff because I am mostly ready to go. Um, it's given to here, so we'll make that guy first. Why not? So that's the cauldron. We will then make the double compress, it should make three of those, um, and one of those. And of course, do I have just realized. I do have some more, cool, because <laughs> of course I just used the what we need, that's fine. Uh, now we're also going to need some water, so we'll go over here, and I don't know where I'm going to set this up, maybe over here somewhere, I'll just do it outside for now. So I'll probably move most of this out to the new, the magical area, because it probably is more magical. But for now, we just need to set up some of the basics, and I'll show you how it works. Um, so we'll place the petal pocket food there. Uh, we need to put in the water, and one, two, three, four. I forgot some seeds. I'm get some seeds. Shoots. Just the one seed for now. So just the one seed. Head back out here. And if we place it there, we get a pure daisy. Now if we put the pure daisy, pure daisy has to go on to um, dirt like that. Um, now we're going to have to, we're now playing with water here, so let's grab, have we got any strips left? We do heaps of them, um, so we'll go for one, two, three, four, let's go, uh, nine, Probably a completely wrong number, but we'll see. Okay, here. And we, the problem with water, of course, is that we wash away the plant or the daisy. Um, so we'll place this around there. And then we will place. Uh, it has to be on the outside. Uh, I need one here. Let's take a risk. Nope, cool. Uh, so put the note, do the same there, and there, there, and there, there, and there. Hopefully, if I read that correctly, we should be able to put water on there. 
it's sparkling, which is good. It's very good. We'll take a few moments for it to happen. Don't know if the water and can will make a difference. Probably by the time I get back in fact, let's go around the water and can because I can always test that. So it will take a couple of minutes for the water to turn. Um, I'm hoping, of course, if we use a water and can, it will go faster. So there you go, we've got some snow. That's cool. There you go, so more snow. Now, of course, it's snow now, so what are you going to do? I have a silk touch pack? Shovel, I should say. Uh, no. Okay. I have to make myself a silky. Right, you don't have any silky, give me a healer. So key. Um these guys block of emerald. Yeah, I thought that was the bit going to be the case. <laughs> okay, well, I'll go get some emeralds. Um and I'll come back once I've got the um the silk touch shovel. Okay, so we now have a, um, a shovel with salt touch. All these guys here are ready, so we'll grab some more water. Take that out. Another one out. Take that one out. Put another one in. Take that one out. Another one. Uh, that. And put that there and put that there. And now, as I said, I want to see if the watering can makes a difference. Um, yeah, it doesn't really make much of a much of a difference. Um, but so that's how we. Oops, that's how we're going to be making the uh, snow. Um, so we just keep. As I said, I'll probably move this to the new magical area. Uh, at the moment, though, it just needs to be here so that I can. Place the stuff into the compressor. And grab some water. Grab some water. Um, and what I'll also do is I'll set up a Steve's factory manager off camera um, and we'll get that crafting that up a bit better. Hopefully, I could do that somehow. Um, I'll have to play with that off camera and see what we can do. So, the next thing we're going to do is go up to the compressor, which is up here. And we'll stick the snow into here. And this should make ice. Um, and while we we'll wait for that, I'm going to grab. Uh, it's called a pitting. Another four of those, and we'll make up another. Oh, and some seeds. Good evening. Seeds. Seeds. And grab some water to 
flash and dot out. Um, I'm not automating this just at the moment because, of course, if I'm going to move it, it would be silly to automate it by putting by automatically putting water in and that sort of stuff. Uh, we will drop the seeds in. And those. We'll place a pure daisy. Let's take out this guy there and stick the daisy on there um, and then we'll go back upstairs. Oh, they're finished already oh, while we're here. Uh, we have our a new fancy shabu. And this is just one of the slime shovels. Um, I really like the slime tools, they do really well. Um, in fact, you probably noticed in this whole series so far, I've been using stone, stone picks and shovels, and stone, and of course the slime tools. Uh, slime tools, because Nicole made that cool farm over there, which just seems to have so much stuff in it. Um, and they're really durable. After all, that's still, and you can see on the second slot of my inventory that I'm still using the King Slime Longsword from a from probably just a two or three, I think it was. Um, and now, of course, I've got our ice. We should be able to place, in fact, we, can be, we should be able to do that right around here. And if this works, try this again. And that things won't melt on me. Oh, that's promising. Packed ice, packed ice, packed ice. Brilliant, that works perfectly. And what have you done the snow? Um, awesome. So. Um, of course, once again, we have another silk touch thing, which I do have one of. Um, this guy here is a silk touch. Okay. Okay. So it's <laughs> been a f few days since I actually last recorded because I couldn't get this contraption to work. I tried many different methods, uh, putting a turtle down, um, I used Steve's factory manager, I tried using the autonomous activators as I'm going to show here, and unfortunately every time I tried to do something I ran into a problem normally with the silk touch um, but I persevered um, unfortunately this episode is going to be late because of it um, however what you have in front of you or in front of me is a packed ice machine um, I still need to tweak numbers a little bit because I'm still getting too much ice um, but what it does is the um, I went down rather than creating the water and then putting it in, uh, converting it to ice and then putting it in the compressor I thought well I'm in an arctic biome I could just use ice so I thought okay I'll put down the water and I'll try it and yes I got that got ice but it wasn't reliable, and I'd have to start, of course, with water, and then it would turn into snow, um, which then have to convert it to the normal preference. So I thought, okay, let's try something else. Um, so what I ended up doing is I thought, I'm going to go a little bit more advanced. In the middle here, we have gelid cryophium. I thought I, spelled, uh, I pronounced that right. Um, which is the stuff that makes everything freeze really quickly. Um, you can see that we have resident emitters. Um, well, actually, 
underneath it, um, there is, in fact, if we take out, if we take out a dirt block in the middle here, let's pick this guy up for a second. You'll see that um, underneath here, I've actually in, put in some mine factory related fountains. And what these do is pretty simple little blocks. If we look fountain, you can see that they're a nice, easy-ish easy recipe to make. Um, they work similar to the floodgate from Bullcraft. And what it does... <laughs> Not gonna work very well at the moment. Um, is it'll place a shoot of water above it. Um, much like most of the other machines, it does take upgrades. By default, it does one above it. If you give an upgrade, however, it'll go higher up and it pushes the water up, which is quite a cool effect. Um, and that's why they call it a fountain because, of course, it makes source blocks up above it. Now, as you see, this is full of water, and that is done just for the infinite water source and Steve's factory manager. So here's our infinite water source coming in from here, going into the tank. For some reason, Steve's factory manager doesn't connect, won't get the items out of the transfer node, so I've gone I had to put it into a tank. Um, what it does, it puts into the fountain, and then of course the fountain is powered. It does require RF, um, which I have got a... Uh, generator around here somewhere. Um, just generating up enough power so that it can run these machines. The and what that does is push the water up into the between the sections here. On the side, you can see that there are block detectors. So these are block detectors here from Steve's factory manager. Of course, all these are connected up for Steve's factory manager. Uh, and the block detector is set to detect the, if there's packed ice. And if there is packed ice, then it will send a signal to the redstone emitter here, or vice versa of all of these. It's a separate um, setup. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> left already. Um, so it's a redstone emitter which sends it to uh, which sends out a signal to the anonymous activator, which has got a silk touch king slime pick in it. I use king slime because of course we've got a lot of king slimes, and all I had to do was put a silk in it. Um, and it has a lot of durability, so it will run out, but it works a lot better. Now, when I was initially testing, and one of the reasons why it took me so long to get this up and running, was I picked a few picks that don't actually work properly in the autonomous activator. Um, so I was trying to get other methods, and I just I accidentally put this pick in here, um, or another similar pick in here, and it worked. And I thought, okay, that's weird. Um, tried it out a bit more, and yep, it does actually work. So um, I won't complain about Tinker's not actually working the Thomas activator. Um, obviously, these guys are set to left click, and they're set to only on a high signal which means that when the signal comes in the redstone emitter, it'll send it into the autonomous activator. The autonomous activator will break the block in front of it, whoops, ow, um, which will be the packed ice in this case. Or in that case, it's actually snow, but we're not detecting that. Uh, so the block sends that, the redstone emitter does that. Uh, there is also a middle, uh, you may be able to see it, down there. Oh, of course, there's quite glare glass in here. Um, um, there's an item bell for Steve's Factory Manager, which works the same as a item hopper. Um, and I'll just notice those blocks there are wrong. So let me just fix that. Um, I had some spare glass, and I couldn't work out why. Actually, what am I doing? Um, uh, just you. Put that into there. Just you. And we'll just. Um, 
Um, then we'll take this guy back. And put him over here. Um, I still have to make this look a bit more nicer than it currently is, but really it's just a for getting packed ice. Um, and it actually does seem to work reasonably well. I'm getting, as you can see, I've already managed to get enough packed ice to fill the roof up here. Um, let's just pop this guy back. Actually, we need to break um, that. Every now and then it does fill with snow, and I have to come in here and fix it up. But that's possibly because we're in an Arctic environment, and it just freezes over. Um, I'll put that there like that. And we will stick a piece of dirt in the top. Now I've used dirt because I don't want to have to keep breaking the packed ice. Um, so the item valve picks it up and sticks in the chest. So overly pretty simple system. Uh, and in fact, here's the C's factory manager from it. So as you can see, each um, block height has a trigger. Uh, which is set as a block update detector and it's set to detect packed ice. Another thing I found is you have to set this to fuzzy or it won't detect the packed ice um, and just untick everything else. Obviously the sides are set so that it only picks up on the side because it's sitting on it's one there and there's one there. It'll pick up the one in the middle there um, on both of them. So I set it so that the sides are it's only picking up the side that I want to focus on. And on a high pulse, it'll initiate the emitter and it just sits with a pulse here. So do emit pulse, two seconds, and I think I might need to decrease that because it sounds like it's going a lot faster than it should be. Um, in fact, you can hear it breaking away, so let's just change that now. Because, that, because of course, it's currently getting ice when it breaks it if it's staying on too long and taking the pick durability down so we'll try that um oh, was that? Yeah. so yeah the it's basically doing a, a pulse keeping it old so it basically emits the the 15 pulse that set the output and then reverts back to the old value um and that's same for each of the the block update detectors um, here we just have the basic fill, grab the liquid from the tank, stick it into each of the fountains so it keeps the water up. Um, this is for the item valve, sending it to the chest. This is just grabbing the RF input from the generator and sticking it into the various oil machines that require power. Um, so overall, pretty simple recipe, and it is actually giving me enough power, or enough packed ice, that hopefully I can leave it, and maybe AFK for a little while, or set up a chunk loader of some form, and it will um, hopefully give me enough packed ice that I can build this base. Um, I haven't really done much with the base since you last saw it, um, this is pretty much all it is. So, not a lot. So, I'll probably show that off in a future video. So, I think I'll end this episode here. If you've found anything in this video of use, or you're planning on making an, a packed ice thing yourself, don't forget to leave a, a like. If you have any comments or suggestions on how I could make this better, or ways around it, um, I did try a total program. In fact, I wrote one up and it was working pretty well. And then I found out that the silk touch picks were working. I went back to this uh, another method. Um, leave a comment down below though if you've got other suggestions on how it could have worked. If you're new to the channel and liked what you saw, hit that, uh, that subscribe button. Don't forget to go check out the other, the other YouTubers on the server. But otherwise, have a great day, and see ya! Try this again. That's the snow. Whoop. Just 
Odd. It's also not going anywhere, which is also weird. Oh! No! Okay. <laughs> It's indicating it's doing something. Oh, of course, it's sunlight. Oh dear. Um, hmm. 